Welcome to Love Them Knives channel, Kaiser Justice, and this is a Vanguard series knife. Check it out. Interesting. Looks like a very sensible blade design. I saw it and I liked uh, the initial design. I like these little fullers and they run front and back so it balances the design of the knife. Of course, it's a liner lock, so front looks like back. That's a good thing. Deep carry pocket clip. That looks good. And it can go left hand as well. So right and left hand. Plus, you got a glass breaker on the end. There's a lot that's interesting about this knife. And the action's really nice. Okay. So is it centered? Does it look centered to you? It's centered. It's centered. Any blade player to lock rock? No. Um, the lockup is around 35%. Mm, skeletonized liners, and we will take it apart. Check it out a little bit. Check out the thumb studs. They're kind of wicked, aren't they? Hmm. So can you... Yes, you can finger flick it from the back. It's got this little choil here. It doesn't really give you a go-forward position here uh, because of the flipper tab. But, I mean, for sharpening, yeah. N690, so it's a true stainless, which is nice. I'm glad they did that. Let's take a look at the box. Justice, and here's the designers. Okay, so Azo, he's doing a bunch for Kaiser. And then I don't know the other guy, and I'm not even going to pronounce his name. I'll see if I can find him on Instagram and give you a link to his, his uh, Instagram. 3.8 inch blade. Okay, this is gray G10, and there's your model number, 4543N1. And that is kind of a blue-gray G10. I've already put it on my list of one that I'm going to dye on my dye video, which I keep talking about. <laughs> Who knows when I'll get that damn thing done. i probably got 15 knives I'm going to be dying. It will be a lot of dying. A lot of dying. There's so much dying, you'll think it's a plague going on. That's a lot of dying. But I think it'll be fun to do. And there's the backspacer. So is that aluminum? Is that titanium? Of course, I can't tell here, but I will when I get it apart. I'm thinking that's steel, but of course, these liners are steel. So I don't know until I get this apart. There's my balance on the knife. That's pretty good. Easy to find. It's easy to disengage this lock bar here. See the pass through. Drops. It's over the detent ball pretty quickly. So, thumb stud. Um, flipper tab. So, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I mean, that is an elephant. That's a flipper tab that comes straight from Gehenna. I mean, that is... What the hell? Um, okay, this is kind of, this is the Mako. This is the Best Tech Mako. Check that out, okay? So these are kind of very similar, and they both come out recently. Uh, this here bothers me. This does not. Now, you know, you can kind of sneak up on here, but this seems more sensible. This one kicks forward. It's squared off, and it's just butt-ass ugly. Other than that, I mean, if you take this away, how's the, how's the design flow of the knife? It looks really nice. Now, how is the design flow of the knife? Great here. Great here. Blade to handle length. Pretty adequate there, so that's fine. No play in the detent, not a problem there. But this, this has got... Got to go. Got to go. Absolutely got to go, man. I'll tell you what. I was talking to BJ Hill. Hilltop Knives and Gear. Check him out on Instagram. Uh, because he does knife mods. And I'm going to tell him to mod squad his way out of that flipper tab for me. Because really, other than that, that's a good looking knife, isn't it? Now, let's get a piece of paper over here. Slick, slick. That's good. The box it comes in is nothing crazy good, and it's not terribly structural, but it's okay. And it comes with their 
high performance gear and it fits in there and then there's a you know some paperwork which is just generic stuff and then it has a little microfiber cloth in here as well uh which is it's nice that you get a microfiber cloth the generic paperwork is uh who cares right uh, this is first of all can't read that and second of all these are just a bunch of standard pictures they put on every piece of paperwork. They need to rethink that whole deal. Um, do what QSP and a lot of the others do, which is put a card in there. Talk about the specifics of the knife that you're actually buying. The one that's in the box it would be good. Ergo's on this knife. They're good. They're good. It's neutral. Uh, really, if you look at the handle shape, I like it. I like it. I like the handle shape. Uh, you've got jimping up here on top of the on top of the handle uh, and on top of the blade. And you know what? That it's not it's not overly aggressive, but you can definitely feel it. And if you look at this, uh, the texturing on the scales is good. It's good for grip. It really is. So it's grippy. You've got jimping along this lower area on the liners as well. I like the backspacer. I like it. I, I don't know what it is, but we'll find out. But even if it's steel, okay, that's fine. Which brings us to how heavy is it? You know it's got a 3.8 inch blade. You already saw the stats on that. Let's go here and... 141 grams, let's roll around to ounces, well, right at five ounces, right at five ounces. So, mm, let's see, best tech swordfish is bigger, not a whole lot. How about my Night Stalker? Uh, Night Stalker, pretty close, maybe a little smaller. And that's the TS-219 by Jerry Jelly, but it's called the Night Stalker. So uh, that's a Tucson knife right there. And, of course, we had it lined up with the Mako. And uh, you know what? They look almost dead on the same. So is it really 3.8? Uh, it's 3.75 all day long. 3.77, I don't know, try and guess that one. But it's it's 3.75 cutting edge, which is like 96, 97 uh, millimeters. And overall, well, it's eight and a half. It's all of that, not counting the glass breaker. And between 21 and a half and 22 centimeters. Put this to the test. Uh, 12.4 millimeters. Come on, get squared up. At 0.49, so that's not overly fat. And then 0.12 blade stock, a little over three millimeter blade stock, so that's not uh, crazy fat either. But it slices really nice. It's sharp out of the box. Nice solid drop to it, you know, feels good, kind of tick right there. Um, you know, it's one of those kind of just a rectangle, but it's simple. And without seeing that flipper tab there, you get what I'm saying? Wow. I mean, really, that's not bad. Now, maybe it's a little big for you. Um, so, but this is like about right my sweet spot. 3.75 to 4 inch blade, you know, 8.4 to even 9 inches overall length, and I'm happy. And just at 5 ounces, so that's not a crazy pocket brick. Now, if they would have done, um, if they would have done the screws on this pocket clip flat, it would have been better. Now, take a look at the Civivi Vexor, see? And they place the pocket clip on top of the scale. You know why? Because they're going to go right or left hand, and they didn't want to machine out an area. Same here. Right or left hand didn't want to machine out an area. But, okay, see how the pocket screws really kind of come up 
and impinge on how big a gap you have there on your pocket lip. So that's where they could really improve. Be nice if I had a bunch of different screws that are metric that I could just replace and go flat right on there. Yeah, kind of interesting how they did this little stripe down here. But at least it's deep carry. That's cool. Kind of going a little bit tactical with the, with the glass breaker and all that. So those two guys to get together to design this is like uh, a 10-4 good buddy, but uh, maybe you ought to get the memo on this. That kind of, you know what that reminds me of, and I probably shouldn't say this, but it looks a lot like the Brian Nadeau Sharp, uh, Sharp by Design uh, Typhoon. If you've seen his knife, it's got that, that boot heel look when it's flipped open like that. And I've always not liked that flipper tab on that knife. Fit and finish is fine though overall on this knife. I, I like it. Um, it's, it's, it's good, it feels solid in the hand. So I'm not complaining about that. Quick over the detent, good fidget friendly, all that. But I'm gonna do this. Cause I'm, I'm gonna take that sucker off and I'm gonna make it to where I can just thumb flick it and finger flick it because, I'm sorry, the flipper tab is driving me completely crazy. Okay, let me see if I can remember this. So no entree from the back of this pivot. Interesting, isn't that? You would think you'd want the most presentable side uh, in the front, on the presentation side. But I'll remember that, hopefully, when I put this back together. Uh, but I'm going to pull her apart just like this. We'll kind of see. Ooh, and we got it stuck on there. There's probably a little thread locker in there. Not too bad, and it didn't... Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But, I mean, it didn't spin this, so that means... Ah, it's a D-shaped pivot. Can you see that? Okay. Thank you very much, Kaiser. Appreciate that. And guess what? These are number eights. Let's celebrate that, man. Woo! I only need one. Only need one. I might need... Nah, I thought I was I thought I thought was going to spin this other side, but guess what? I ain't. I'd rather be lucky than good. Okay, here we go. And... Come on. Come on. Now, let's see if both of these things... Well, come on. Really? What do I have to do? Pay you money to get out of there? Okay. Are they going to be the same size? Yeah, they are. A little thread locker. Yeah, a little bit on there, too. Okay. Here we come. There's the scale. Okay. Whew, weird. I never put any goop on it, so that's, that's factory pre-gooped. Okay. Now, where are we in here? Well, no screws or anything. And there's your D-shaped pivot, so it's facing that way. We'll remember that when we put it back together. Even at my age, hopefully we'll remember that. Where's my spatula? There you go. You know what, guys? It might not be a bad idea for you to get a plastic thing. And I, I have beat up. Look at this. This is sad. But I have... Um, I got that with a bag of just assorted gobbledygook on Amazon. I'm sure these are absolutely super inexpensive, but I, I, they really come in handy for loosening things up. Come on. Come on. Wow, you didn't want to let go, did you? Okay, there's the uh, there's the stop, which obviously just slides through the the liner, and everything's just wet with goop. And what do we got here? Those are ceramic ceramic bearings, and it just dropped out. And these can drop out too. And there's my D-shaped pivot. Pull that out from the back side and yeah they made it d-shaped so when it goes through to the opposite liner then it'll catch that and keep anything from moving and here's this okay let's take this off we want to test to see if this is magnetic yeah it's magnetic 
so it's steel. Um, the good thing, if it was aluminum, it would probably take a little bit of weight off. Um, and it probably shouldn't, you wouldn't think, cost that much more. But it's steel. So, okay, well, it's, it's solid. At least with this piece in there um, for a glass breaker, that's pretty good backup. And these standoffs are pretty, uh, pretty sturdy as well. So, okay, we're good. Time to put it back together. And shouldn't be too difficult, should it? And we know this funky baby moon here was in the back. So let's kick it right through there. Kind of interesting the way they machine that liner there for the bearing to fit in. Uh, but let's put it in there. Now let's get me some KPL and dump it. Dump a little on there. And kick me a blade on here. Okay. Let's make sure. Make sure I get that D, that number D shape facing back like like that because that's the way she's all going to come together correctly with that other liner lining up okay like this liner right here oh first of course let's put our stop back in There we go. Good old boy. Stop is in. Liner's lined up with the little D. Let's put the outer scale on. Let's put the pivot in. Okay, don't get it tightened down too tight till we get ready to adjust everything. These are the same size, so it don't make no difference. Okay. Okay, where are we? Not quite straightened up yet. Where are we? Okay, now we should be, and we are. Now, have I got it too tight? Maybe a bit. Come on, let's crack it back you off just a little bit that's better yeah now we're good Kaiser Justice of course I got it from White Mountain Knives and LTK is the discount code for 10% off check it out uh, flipper tab mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. no but uh, it can be removed for a phenomenal fee and I think I'm ready to do that so that'll be interesting future video you'll see it in in my dying video dying scales and then maybe in a future BJ Hill knife mod video oh yeah other than that I do like it I like the design I'll let you go thank you so much you know what we do around here we love those knives so you guys stay sharp